Ah, I got a special treat today. Yep. Monty Python's Holy Grail Ale. Tempered over burning witches. <laughs> I love it. Those guys are great. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Holy Grail Ale. <laughs> you gotta love it, man. <laughs> I haven't tried this yet. It sounds heavenly, though. Okay, just want to make sure I'm not cheating here. That is nice. That's very nice. Very nice. Lives up to the name. Chapter 17 of First Nephi. It's a little longer than the other chapters, but it's got half the drink potential of the preceding chapter. <laughs> and it came to pass that we did again take our journey in the wilderness, and we did travel nearly easternward, yeah, travel nearly eastern, nearly easternward from that time forth, and we did travel and wade through much affliction in the wilderness, and our women did bear children in the wilderness. And so great was the blessings of the Lord upon us, that while we did live upon raw meat in the wilderness, our women did give plenty of suck. <sighs> For their children. Oh. And were strong, yea, even like unto the men. And they began to bear their journeyings without murmurings. Pretty nice of these unnamed women, you know, to uh, not murmur. They ain't doing better than their husbands. Maybe they should be naming them and, and just say brother one, brother two, and brother three. I mean, these women aren't, they haven't, they haven't murmured much. And thus we see that the commandments of God must be fulfilled. And if it be so that the children of men keep the commandments of God, he doth nourish them and strengthen them and provide means whereby they can accomplish the thing which he has commanded them. Wherefore he did provide means for us while we did sojourn in the wilderness. And we did sojourn for the space of many years, yea, even eight years in the wilderness. Such a waste for writing. That's all I'm going to say. And we did come to the land which we called bountiful because of its much fruit and also wild honey and also those things were prepared of the Lord that we might not perish. And we beheld the sea, which we called Ariamptimum, which being interpreted is many waters. Why? Wait. <laughs> is that a Hebrew word? Is that why? Because they're writing in Egypt. That's why you said he had to interpret this word? Because... You know, because it's being translated by Joseph Smith, and uh, it sounds a little fishy. By the way, every time I see those uh, chrome Jesus fish on somebody's bumper, <laughs> I always have to laugh. It's like, you're right, it is a fishy story. It's like, it's like they're admitting it. <laughs> yeah, very fishy. Iriamptimum which being interpreted is many waters. <laughs> oh, man. That's really nice. And it came to pass that we did pitch our tents by the seashore 
and notwithstanding we had suffered many afflictions and much difficulty, yea, even so much that we cannot write them all, because they need to make room to rip off huge chunks of Isaiah to pad this book. Ah. Yeah, they can't even write them all. We were exceedingly rejoiced when we came to the seashore, and we called the place Bountiful because of its much fruit. You know, Bountiful was a pretty popular name back in, around the time of Joseph Smith's youth, you know? A lot of ships were named that, if I, were, if I remember right. And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had been in the land of Bountiful for the space of many days, the voice of the Lord came unto me, saying, Arise, and get thee up into the mountain, And it came to pass that I arose and went up into the mountain and cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Couldn't I just talk to you in your tent? You had to go climb a fucking mountain? That's fine. I mean, God can do anything, but he's going to make you climb a fucking mountain. Yeah. Oh, well, the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou shalt construct a ship after the manner which I shall show thee. I've done this before, trust me. <laughs> that I may carry thy people across these waters. And I said, Lord, whither shalt Shall I go that I may find ore to molten, that I may make tools to construct the ship after the manner which thou hast shown unto me? And it came to pass that the Lord told me whither I should go to find ore, that I might make tools. <clears throat> this is really good. It's not just a novelty beer. Although everything does seem a lot funnier all of a sudden. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did make a bellows wherewith to blow the fire of the skins of beasts. And after I had made a bellows that I might have wherewith to blow the, the fire, I did smite two stones together that I might make fire. <clears throat> you know, uh, this is the King James. I've seen them say struck as well as smite. It's okay. Struck sounded too modern. We have to say smite all the time and slay all the time. You know, this just is, does not have the vocabulary of this. It tries, you know, it tries. <coughs> but it just doesn't have it. Something's missing. It's kind of like hillbilly Shakespeare, you know? It's not quite right. <sighs> Smite two stones together. For the Lord had not hitherto suffered that we should make much fire as we journeyed in the wilderness. For he said, I will make thy food become sweet, that ye cook it not. I guess he changed their digestive system, too, because I don't think we digest raw meat very good after, you know, thousands of years of cooking it. 
I guess it's steak tartare the whole way. Yeah. <laughs> and I will also be your light in the wilderness. How about some fire while you're at it? <laughs> and I will rep prepare the way before you, if it be that ye shall keep my commandments. Always conditional with this guy. Wherefore, you know, no unconditional love on his side, is there? <laughs> Sorry. Wherefore, in as much as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall be led towards the promised land. And ye shall know that it is by me that ye are led. Yea, and the Lord said also that after ye have arrived in the promised land, ye shall know that I, the Lord, am God, and that I, the Lord, did deliver you from destruction. Yea, that I did bring you out of the land of Jerusalem, wherefore I, Nephi, did strive to keep the commandments, commandments of the Lord, and I did exhort my brother, brethren to faithfulness and diligence. And it came to pass that I did make tools of the ore which I did molten out of the rock. And when my brethren saw that I was about to build a ship, they began to murmur against me, saying, Our brother is a fool, for he thinketh that he can build a ship, yea, and he also thinketh that he can cross these great waters. And thus my brethren did complain against me, and were desirous that they might not labor. For they did not believe that I could build a ship, neither would they believe that I was instructed of the Lord. And now it came to pass that I... Nephi was exceeding sorrowful because of the hardness of their hearts again. And now, when they saw that I began to be sorrowful, they were glad in their hearts, insomuch that they did rejoice, rejoice over me, saying, We knew that ye could not construct a ship, for we knew that ye were lacking in judgment. Wherefore, Thou canst not accomplish such a great work, and thou art like unto our father, led away by the foolish imaginations of his heart. Yea, he hath led us out of the land of Jerusalem, the land of Jerusalem, <clears throat> and we have wandered in the wilderness for these many years, and our woman, women have toiled, being big with child. And they have borne children in the wilderness and suffered all things, save it were death. And it would have been better that they had died before they came out of Jerusalem than to have suffered these afflictions. Behold, these many years have we suffered in the wilderness, which time we might have enjoyed our possessions and the land of our inheritance, yea, and we might have been happy. <laughs> and we know that the people of, who are in the land of Jerusalem are a righteous people, for they kept the statutes and judgments of the Lord and all his commandments according to the law of Moses. Wherefore, we know that they are a righteous people, and our Father hath judged them and hath led us away because we would, because we would hearken unto his words, yea, and our brother is like unto him. And after this manner of language did my brethren murmur and complain against us. It just gets better and better. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, spake unto them, saying, Do ye believe that our fathers, who were the children of Israel, would have been led out of the hands of the Egyptians, 
if it had not if they had not hearkened to the words of the Lord, yea, do ye suppose that they would have been led out of bondage? If the Lord had not commanded Moses that he should lead them out of bondage? Now ye know that the children of Israel were in bondage, and ye know that they were laden with tasks which were grievous to be borne. Wherefore ye know that it must needs be a good thing for them that they should be brought out of bondage. Good thing, yeah. Now ye know that Moses was commanded of the Lord to do that great work, and ye know that by his word the waters of the Red Sea, or the Sea of Reeds as it's properly called, were divided hither and thither, and they passed through on dry ground. But ye know that the Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea. Who were the armies of Pharaoh? God, we're going over the same territory again and again. And ye also know that they were fed with manna in the wilderness. Yeah, how come he hasn't given these guys manna? I mean, they were... <laughs> They're having a tough time. He, he broke his springy bowl, bow <laughs> of steel. <sighs> Yea, and ye also know that Moses, by his word, according to the power of God, which was in him, smote the rock, and there came forth water, that the children of Israel might quench their thirst. And notwithstanding they, being led... The Lord their God, their Redeemer, going before them, leading them by day, and giving light unto them by night, and doing all things for them which were expedient for men, for man to receive, they hardened their hearts, and blinded their minds, and reviled against Moses, and against the true and living God. And it came to pass that according to his word, he did destroy them, Moses. And according to his word, he did lead them. And according to his word, he did, he did do all things for them. And, they, and there was not anything done, save it were by his word. And after they had crossed the river Jordan, he did make them a mighty make them might, mighty unto the driving out of the children of the land, yea, unto the scattering them to destruction, which isn't true. <laughs> they never did a good job of kicking the Canaanites out. And hell, they were afraid of the Philistines. And now, do ye suppose that the children of this land, who were in the land of promise, who were driven out by our fathers, do ye suppose that they were righteous? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. <laughs> do ye suppose that our fathers would have been would have been more choice than they? Do you suppose that our fathers would have been more choice than they if they had been righteous? I say unto ye, you, Nay. Behold, the Lord esteemeth all flesh in one, that he that is righteous is favored of God, but behold, his people have rejected every word of God. And they were ripe with iniquity, and the, and the fullness of the wrath of God was upon them, and the Lord did curse the land against them. And bless it, un uh, and bless, bless it unto our fathers. Yea, he did curse it. Uh, wait. And bless it unto our fathers. Yea, he did curse it against them unto their destruction, and he did bless it unto our fathers unto the obtaining power over it. Yeah, I can see how this is much more perfect than uh, the Bible. I mean, the Bible's 
pretty well written, actually, in parts. This, I mean, I think it's got a couple of good moments, but most of it is like, yeah, good, good thing it, you know, provides an excuse to drink. <sighs> and he raiseth up a righteous nation, nation, and destroyeth the nations of the wicked, wicked. And he leadeth away the righteous into precious lands, and the wicked he destroyeth and curseth the land unto them for their sakes. He ruleth high in the heavens, for it is his throne, and his this earth is his footstool. So we're pretty much ripping off Psalms, I think. And he loveth those who have him to be their God. Behold, he loved our fathers, and he covet covenanted with them, yea, even Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, even them. <laughs> and he remembered the covenants which he had made, wherefore he did bring them out of the land of Egypt. Even more repetition. You've already said this again and again. Nephi, Mr. Abridgment Guy. And he did straighten them in the wilderness with his rod. For they hardened their hearts, even as ye have, and the Lord straightened them because of their iniquity. He sent fiery, flying serpents among them, and after they were bitten, he prepared a way that they might be healed. And the labor which they had to perform was to look. And because of the simpleness of the way, or the easiestness of it, easiness of it, there were many who perished. And uh, he's of course referring to uh, Numbers twenty-one uh, six through nine, where Moses made a brass staff serpent, <laughs> and they looked at it and they were okay. And then. Uh, in 2 Kings 18.4, Hezekiah uh, had it torn down as a pagan shrine made by Moses. And he's quoting this. That's funny. Ah. And they did harden their hearts from time to time, and they did revile against Moses and also against God. Nevertheless, ye know that they were led forth by his matchless power into the land of promise. And now, after all these things, the time has come that they have become wicked, yea, nearly unto ripeness, and I know not, but they are at this, time, day, at this day about to be destroyed, for I know that the day must surely come that they must be destroyed, save a few only who shall be led away into captivity. Wherefore the Lord commandeth my father that he should depart into the wilderness, and the Jews also sought to take away his life. Yea, and they also sought to take away his... Oh, why? Wherefore the... Ye, wait. And ye also have sought to take away his life. Wherefore ye are murderers in your hearts, and ye are like unto them. Ye are swift to do iniquity, but slow to remember the Lord your God. Ye have seen an angel, and he has spake unto you. Yea, ye have heard his voice from time to time, and he has spoken unto you in a still small voice, but ye are past, but ye were past feeling that ye could not feel his words. You have to feel his words in your heart. By then the hook set. <laughs> ah, feel it. <laughs> Wherefore he has spoken, spoken unto you like unto the voice of thunder, which did cause the earth to shake as if 
it were to divide asunder. And ye also know that by the power of his almighty word, he has caused the earth that it shall pass away, yea, and ye know that by his word he can cause the rough places to be smooth, and the smooth places shall be broken. <sighs> broken up. Oh, then, why is it that ye can be so hard in your hearts? Behold, my soul is rent <laughs> with anguish because of you, and my heart is pained. I fear lest ye shall be cast off forever. Behold, I am full of the Spirit of God, insomuch that my frame has no strength. He has all this power, to, and because of it, he has no strength. <laughs> he must have got a haircut. <laughs> and now... It came to pass. Ooh. That when I had spoken these words, they were angry with me. And were desirous to throw me into the depths of the sea. I understand how they feel. And as they came forth to lay their hands upon me, I spake unto them, saying, In the name of the Almighty God, I command you that ye touch me not, for I am filled with the power of God, even unto the consuming of my flesh. Kind of like a Emperor Palpatine, huh? <laughs> and whoso shall lay his hands upon me shall wither, even as a dried reed. And he shall be as not <laughs> before the power of God, for God shall smite him. Hmm. Uh oh. And it came to pass that I. Nephi said unto them that they should murmur no more against their father, neither should they withhold their labor for me, for God had commanded me that I should build a ship. And I said unto them, If God had commanded me to do all things, I could do them. If he should command me that I should say unto this water, Be thou earth, it should be earth, and if I should say unto it, say it, it would be done. Too bad they didn't set that up. That would have been cool. They could have walked it in North America. That would have been neat. <sighs> but no, they didn't do that. <laughs> and now, if the Lord had such has such great power, and has wrought so many miracles among the children of men, how is it that he cannot instruct me that I should build a ship. <clears throat> and it came to pass that I, Nephi, said many things unto my brethren, yeah, insomuch that they were confounded and could not contend against me. Neither durst they lay their hands upon me, nor touch me with their fingers, even for the space of many days. Now they durst not do this, lest they should wither before me. So powerful was the Spirit of God, and thus he wrought upon, so he, thus he had wrought upon them. And it came to pass that the Lord said unto me, Stretch forth thine hand against, again unto thy brethren, and they shall not wither before thee, but I will shock them. So he's going to tase them. Shock of God. But I will shock them, saith the Lord. This 
I will do that they may know that I am the Lord their God. <clears throat> and it came to pass that I stretched forth my hand unto my brethren, and they did not wither before me, but the Lord did shake them even according to the word which he had spoken. So like a big joy buzzer. <laughs> and now they said, We know of a surety that the Lord is with thee, for we know that it is the power of the Lord that has shaken us. And they fell down before me and were about to worship me, but I would not suffer them, saying, I am thy brother. Yea, even thy younger brother. The, wherefore, worship the Lord thy God, and honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord shall, giveth, well, shall give thee. And that's chapter 17. We're almost home. They're going to build a boat, and um, and I can't wait to get to that next, so. Anyway, until next time, uh, <laughs> this is worth buying. Monty Python Holy Grail Ale. And it's tempered over burning witches. Peace out.